Welcome to the latest episode of Griffin Hall. As you may remember from previous episodes, I have a plan for the hall and much of the surrounding region. And I've been preparing and preparing and preparing some more. Uh, However, this time I'm definitely going to start building the workshop. Uh, Period. (laughs) I mean, there's just no turning back this time. Now, in this episode, the goals are few, but they involve a great deal of grunt work. Uh, For one, I need to excavate the space for the workshop and the storage levels, which are uh, levels 14 and 15 on my design template. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'll dig that part. Um, I need to finish the wall, ceiling, and floor of these levels in preparation for moving in. And I need to build batteries of water wheels to generate rotational force. So uh, I'll start digging at level 14 and work my way downward to level 15. Now, uh, both levels have the same basic footprint, but the upper level will be mostly empty space, uh, except for the power generation modules. And that's because the bottom level will be filled out with all the basic processing and manufacturing stations. Uh, But as I explore the create mod, I'm pretty sure I'll start getting carried away at some point. And uh, complex builds will require space. And so that empty space on level 14 gives me a place to overflow into. Uh, Besides, until that point, the open space high up looks pretty cool. Therefore, most of the real work will be on level 15. Now, as stated in an earlier episode, uh, the shell of the central shaft is in place, but we don't really have a working elevator in place yet. So the center shaft is technically still under construction, and so we will track that accordingly. In this episode, we will hollow out all the, the space on both levels, and that's a ridiculous amount of digging. Uh, But the good news is is that the effort will probably supply all the deep slate I will need for the rest of the hall, both above and below ground. Uh, The water wheels and storage system will also require a uh, non-trivial amount of work, and so that should probably be enough for a single episode. Uh, The various crafting and processing stations that will come next will fill out the next few episodes. And uh, so it begins. Now, uh, when digging out large vertical spaces, I actually prefer to start at the top and dig downward, and then I finish or surface the ceiling and walls as the work goes downward. Uh, This approach saves a lot of wear and tear from uh, falling and from having to set up and tear down scaffolding all the time. It uh, also makes lava management a lot easier if and when that uh, becomes necessary. I mean, call me crazy, but I would much rather deal with lava at or below my level than with lava hanging right over my head. Uh, On the other hand, if I get too complacent, it's easy to fall through a hole in the floor, which is probably a bad idea considering that my basement opens up to the deep dark and uh, lava lakes are a pretty common feature at this depth. Now, everyone who plays the game seems to have a different opinion uh, about digging in Minecraft. And I don't necessarily think that digging is fun per se, but I, I do enjoy it in a relaxing zen kind of way. And it's, uh, it's not why I build underground, but once I did start building underground, I discovered the relaxing effect that Minecraft digging has on me. So uh, there you go. Now it's kind of a win-win situation. Uh, at least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Now the space for this first module in the upper level has been dug out. And uh, now it's time to add in the ceiling and support columns. Now you may remember that we have already established the look for this when we originally built our overworld portal room. Uh, The design we used there will be the template I used for all the underground portions of the hall. So uh, when we get to modules that have a back or side wall, uh, I'll use the same design that I used for the central access shaft. Uh, I'm a real big fan of having a consistent look or theme within uh, a given build. And uh, I understand it's kind of compulsive, uh, but it's probably one of the reasons why I feel some empathy for Sheldon Cooper. Uh, or at least just some. Um, I'm not nearly as bad as he is. And voila! Uh, the first upper module is complete, and that means I have just 39 more to go on the upper level, as well as all 40 of the lower level before I can start working on the water wheels. As I said before, there's a, a tremendous amount of digging to be done, And then there are the ceilings, walls, and floors to be completed as well. Uh, You've already seen samples of these, so I'm not going to keep throwing out uh, frequent updates to show incremental progress, because at this point they would all tend to look the same anyway. Uh, But I will wait until I have something more substantial to show off. Uh, Like this. At this point, I finished the upper level, including the art ceilings and the walls. 
Uh, I've also finished the catwalks, though I'm still missing a lot of rails as there's a bit of an iron shortage uh, between saving for the elevator and other miscellaneous uses like uh, having and repairing an anvil. However, once I'm farming cobblestone and I'm able to grind it into gravel, uh, I can use a washing mechanism to produce iron nuggets and then I'll have as much iron as I need. So uh, as you can see here though, I've only opened up a fraction of the lower level. Uh, however, as I complete sections, I've been setting up andesite shafts and uh, storage trunk lines under the floor level. Uh, truly, when this is done, the place will be set up so that all I really need to do is set up drawers and workstations and everything will just work, uh, or at least that's the plan. Uh, now at this point, it's become clear to me that there is a spider spawner just outside of my walls. Now, this is actually a very welcome development, uh, and that's because I have the ability to farm string using flax, uh, so I have no shortage of that, but I can't grow spider eyes, and I don't usually care to spend a lot of time uh, running around in the forest after dark in the hopes that I can find a spider or two. So having a uh, convenient spider spawner is a fantastic find. Now, uh, again, I seem to be showered with luck in this world, though it does tend to run hot and cold without much advance notice. Uh, and yes, I am talking about the train generation disaster a few episodes back. Uh, but as I've said before, when my luck is running hot, I won't look a gift horse or a gift creeper in the mouth. Uh, and as far as placement goes, the spider spawner is awfully close to where I would have chosen to place it if I had the option. So when I say that I've been lucky, it is really amazingly lucky. Uh, in fact, I should probably go out and buy a lotto ticket before it wears off. So my plan here is to get to the spawner itself, uh, clear out the surrounding space, and then plant torches to essentially turn it off, and then work to open up and protect the surrounding space. Now with the spawner deactivated and walled off, it is necessary to now clear out the maximum spawning space, and then start to properly wall it in and prepare for the technical bits. Now the way I usually work these is that I will build a, a chamber around the spawner, and then on one wall of the chamber, there will be openings to a control room. Now from the control room, I'll be able to control some redstone lamps set into the floor of the spawning chamber. And then there will be trap doors and a regular door set into the walls, all of which will open to the spawner chamber. Now the way it all works is that when I want to farm spiders, I turn off the lights from the control room and then I open the trap doors. Now the spiders will start spawning and then I can kill them through the trap doors. Now once I have enough loot, or if the loot's about to despawn, uh, I can turn the lights on again and no new spiders will spawn. Then I can open the regular door, enter the chamber to mop up any remaining spiders, and pick up whatever loot's there. Uh, then I return to the control room via the regular door and lather, rinse, and repeat as necessary. Uh, however, this is the first time I'm going to set this up since they dramatically lowered the, the level of light necessary to prevent spawning. So I might have some problems with making the spawning chamber dark enough to actually, you know, spawn spiders. Uh, I'll just have to play it by ear when I get to that point. Uh, and the basics of the spider farm are done, right? Uh, I'll press on with the, uh, the rest of the workshop for now. But when I'm ready for a break, I'll, I'll come back in here and uh, dig out and equip the control room and install the lights and add the finishing touches. Now with uh, farmable sources of spider eyes and blaze powder, uh, I'll be able to go into full-blown potion production. Now, I suppose I could even use the bits from the Create mod to go into a full-scale industrial potion uh, production, uh, but I already can't use all the potions I can create manually, and so I certainly don't need to crank them out industrially and then be uh, swimming in my own potions. Uh, as I've been opening up the levels, I have started to encounter slimes of all sizes. And uh, no, these are not personal injury lawyers or politicians, uh, but apparently the base is located in one or more slime chunks. And so this does ensure relatively easy and consistent access to slime balls, uh, even though the crate mod does give me options to craft them as needed. Uh, finally, the uh, primary digging and finishing of the visible surfaces is complete. Now this includes less visible infrastructure bits like uh, laying the network for transferring rotational energy between uh, the various water wheel stations and to the processing stations that will need the power. Uh, I've also run the trunk lines of the logistics and storage system which will uh, continue through the modules containing the water wheels and then along the back walls where I'll set up the drawers and other storage containers. 
Now, uh, when the design is fully implemented, I'll be able to dump my goodies off at a cabinet by the vertical shaft, uh, which is the home of our future elevator. Now, uh, once dumped into the cabinet, the goodies will drop into a storage controller via a hopper and then get automatically routed to the right drawer somewhere in the, the overall storage system. Now, if you want more insight into how that works, please see my deep dive video on the storage drawers mod. Uh, now it's time to hollow out the modules that will contain the power generators. Now each generation station is two modules long, which is 19 blocks of usable length. Now one block will be reserved for a large gear, which will drive the shafts that will transmit the power. And that leaves 18 blocks for water wheels. And I'll have a row of water wheels down either side of the room, so that'll be a gr uh, total of 36 water wheels. However, uh, I have a lot of vertical space to fill, and so I can stack multiple uh, sets of water wheels on top of each other. Now, I originally tried to set up rows of water wheels that face in alternating directions uh, so that I could have the water flow down and back and forth so that a single flow of water could run uh, between two wheels and drive both of them at the same time. Now, that part worked great, but when I tried to tap the rotational power and link the various rows of water wheels into a single system, I ran into issues of space. Uh, the problem was I needed a lot more of it. Uh, the water wheel rows were too close together to cleanly connect them, and attempts to connect them anyway use up a lot of extra shafts and gearboxes, which are kind of expensive. Now what I finally settled on was to stack rows of water wheels, but each row is individually contained, including its own water supply. Now this resulted in one fewer levels of water wheels, uh, vertically, but saved me a lot of uh, material for the common linkages. Now as discussed, a single layer of water wheels in this space would include 36 water wheels. However, with the new design, I can stack four layers on top of each other uh, for each power generation area, and that means I would have 144 water wheels per generation area. Now since there are four generation areas, that would give me 576 water wheels and each of them would generate 256 units of rotational force for a grand total of 147,456 units of rotational force uh, without the need for fuel management or special materials that are not yet available to me. Now with a little planning and a little budgeting, I think I can work within that limit. Now I ran into a problem that I did not anticipate, but it uh, should not have been surprising. Uh, it seems that individual water wheels are no big deal, but that banks and banks of water wheels can be real uh, performance drains. Now I completed two full generation stations, and uh, now I experience a tolerable but non-trivial lag when running around in the uh, workshop area. So I chose to just build out the space for the remaining two generation stations. Uh, which will allow me to connect all the storage and logistics trunks uh, with the outer storage ring, but I didn't build the water wheels. And this will cut my projected power output in half, which is still a respectable 73,728. Now I'm a little worried that in uh, I still need to build out the individual processing and manufacturing stations, and if possible, I'd like to automate these and connect them directly to the storage system but that would undoubtedly bring some new performance hits. Um, again, I'll cross and burn those bridges when I get to them. And uh, here we go. Now the storage system is working, and as you can see here, I have one Zagonite crystal in uh, storage already, and if I drop off the other 63 in the cabinet I installed near the central shaft, uh, we'll be able to see them pouring into the storage drawer uh, designated for Zagonite. And there you go. Now there's still some work to be done. Uh, of course, I don't have enough iron to complete the railings and I still have some gaps in the storage system where I need to make additional storage drawers. Uh, this is especially true of the green ones, which I am now able to uh, make after a very lucky encounter for Wandering Merchant, which allowed me to finally buy a uh, single block of cactus from which I've built quite a cacti farming operation. Uh, however, all the infrastructure is in place, and I'm ready to start building individual crafting stations. Now, uh, some are relatively simple and or manual in nature, which means that they are going to be uh, quick and easy to set up and explain away. Uh, and so I might group some of those into a single episode. 
However, uh, some of them are definitely going to be complex and will take some time and effort in the design phase even before I get around to actually building them. So some of those may be episodes unto themselves. Uh, however, the heart of the hall is now physically complete and from this point forward it will become increasingly functionally complete as well. Um, once all the stations are in place, I should be able to craft pretty much uh, anything and then I'll work at uh, expanding the hall and working on the rest of the world as well. Now, if you've stuck around this long, you, you are probably waiting to see exactly that. Uh, and we're almost there. So thank you for joining me again. And until next time, take care of yourselves and cheers.